Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Such Plants. If you are new around here, my name is Ron, and today I'm going to be showing you how to start a propagation box. So there are three main reasons why you would want to propagate a plant. Number one, you might want to propagate a plant because it's dying and you want to try to save the plant. But in order for that to be successful, the cutting that you're taking from the mother plant has to be pretty healthy. It cannot be yellow, it cannot be wilting, it cannot be dying. It has to be healthy because in order for the roots to develop, it's going to have to be able to photosynthesize and push energy into creating new roots. The second reason why you would want to propagate your plants is to be able to multiply them and share them to your family and friends or you might want to sell them to make some extra money. And the third reason you would want to propagate your plant is to make the mother plant bushy. When you are taking cuttings from your mother plant, you are going to promote new growth at the incision point. And doing so will allow the mother plant to push new growth into parts of the plant that would otherwise be leggy or bare. There are also three methods to propagate a plant. The first method is to propagate them in water. I personally like to do that because of its higher success rate. For me, roots typically develop within one to two weeks. And then after three to four weeks, I would be able to transfer those cuttings into soil. The second method is to propagate cuttings into soil. I don't typically do that unless I'm propagating them into a container in order to promote and maintain a higher humidity level because I do live in a climate that is very dry. So propagating in a container in my climate would yield a higher success rate. The third method is to propagate into sphagnum moss. Propagating into sphagnum moss is very similar to propagating in soil. It just does not have the beneficial bacteria that soil typically provides. So in order to promote growth in sphagnum moss, I would suggest you to periodically feed the plant with some kind of liquid fertilizer or super thrive or any other plant tonic that you are able to get in your location. Now let me show you the plants that I'm going to be propagating today. Alright, so on this table we have all of the plants that we'll be propagating today. I've got my Begonia Maculata Whitei right here. And as you can see, she's becoming quite bushy already, but I want to propagate it because I do want another plant. I do want another one to bring with me to work. I'm trying to build a collection of plants at work so that all of my coworkers will be jealous, you know? Here is the Philodendron Brazil. And as you can see, it's starting to trail. It's starting to trail very nicely. I want to propagate it because some of the vines in the pot are still rather short so I will be propagating the long stem right here so that the other stems are going to be able to catch up. The third plant I'm going to be propagating today is my Syndapsis Pictus Exotica and she's getting quite long just like the Philodendron Brazil. I want to propagate the longest stem on here. I might make two cuttings because there are two long stems and then one day, all of the stems will be able to trail all from the same length and make this such a bushier plant. The fourth plant is this String of Hearts, the variegated version. And I've been meaning to propagate this one for a long time. I just hadn't gotten to it. As you can see, some of the leaves on here are not the best looking. They are very thin and small because I do eventually want to create a pot of full looking variegated string of hearts. And I know that that's kind of hard to do, so that is why I'm propagating it. Does that make sense? This is another pot of the string of hearts. There is one stem in here that is pushing out all white leaves, and it is this one right here. A lot of the leaves here in this area are pretty healthy. At the top though, it started dropping some leaves, and as you can see, it's very bare. I know that typically happens with this plant, it starts to drop leaves towards the top despite a full appearance down here. So I want to be able to take several cuttings of this and either 
put those back up here once they fully develop roots or probably start a new pot. And then in here, I have a little Ziploc terrarium of a baby, baby, baby Syngonium Albo, which has been in here for a very long time. Let me pull it out. I have probably only pulled it out of the Ziploc a handful of times, and it's been in there for, I wanna say at least six months, definitely longer than six months. And it started off with one leaf, actually no, it started off as a wet stake propagation. And now it has five leaves and the newest leaf right here has the most amount of variegation. So I'm excited to see more and more of that variegation coming out of this plant. And this one has been propagating in sphagnum moss. And you can just see the roots are just becoming unruly. Let me show you the other side. Oh, can you see that? I don't know. And then lastly, those individual Monstera adansonii nodes. So I placed those nodes into a plastic bag right here, and I misted the inside of the plastic bag with a little bit of water. And it's only been a week. None of them have really produced roots yet. This was just me keeping those cuttings in a humid environment until I was able to create this video. But this is what they look like. There is no yellowing, there is no rotting, so those are all good signs. So hopefully they'll take off in the propagation box. So yeah, these are all the plants that I'll be propagating today. So let's get started. All right, hello, welcome to the closer look. So we're gonna start with this Begonia Maculata YDI. So for most begonias, if not all begonias, I believe, you are able to take the cutting either from the leaf petiole right here or from the main stem right here. And both methods will develop roots. But for today, I think I will be taking the cutting from the main stem because as we can see, if we take a little bit of a closer look right here, you will see that there is already a growth point. So taking a cutting from there will produce new growth much quicker than if I were to take a cutting from the leaf right here. So I'm actually gonna be taking the cutting from this stem right here because to me, it's kind of sticking out from the overall plant. And when I do make this cutting, it's gonna produce new growth a lot closer to the stem right here. So it'll result in a much bushier looking mother plant. So I have my sanitized pair of shears right here. So I'll be taking the cutting right around here. So this is what that cutting looks like. I'm actually gonna take another cutting, but this time I'm gonna do a leaf cutting from right here. So that we'll be able to compare the root development between these two cuttings. So, so for this one, I'm gonna be taking the cutting right around here. All right, so this is the mother plant. And here are the two cuttings. Now in between each cutting, I'm gonna re-sterilize my shears with some alcohol. Okay, so the next plant will be this Philodendron Brazil. I just love the variegation on this one. There's a lot more light green going on in this one. Most Philodendron Brazils only have like a really thin light green stripe down the middle. But as we can see, most of these are developing the lime green which I'm a bit nervous because it might be reverting back into the neon color, but I prefer to have more of the bright green versus more of the dark green. I don't know, because I think it looks like a more, it looks like a weird Philodendron Brazil. And I like weird looking plants. So I feel like this one is unique. And the leaves are really shiny on here because last night I did treat all of my plants with a little bit of neem oil because I found a mild, spider mite infestation. So hopefully that's taken care of really quickly. So to propagate this plant, it's very easy. We will just be cutting in between each node and that is where the roots will be developing. So I'm gonna be taking a couple of cuttings from this. First one will be right here. That's cutting number one. Second cutting will be from this vine right here.
And I'll probably take another cutting so that I'll be able to create a small pot of three cuttings. So here's cutting number three. Yeah, I think that's it. So this is the mother plant that's left. And here are the three cuttings. Oh, all right. So the next one is, do you guys say syndapsis or skindapsis? I say syndapsis. Syndap <laughs> syndapsis. All right, so this one has two very long stems right here and right here. I want to take the cutting from the halfway point, I think. So let's start with this vine right here. So there are two nodes here and here where it did not push out a new leaf. Yeah, so I'm not too familiar with why this plant does that because it did that on this vine here as well. See what I mean? There are two nodes here that did not push out leaves. That actually makes the plant look leggy. So at least for this one, I will take the cutting from in between those two bare nodes. So here is cutting number one. So for this next cutting, I think I'm gonna be taking the cutting closer to the base because as we can see, this is a really long vine, but at the base here, it's leggy. It dropped two leaves and the node spacing is a little bit bigger than the rest of the vine. I will be taking the cutting probably up to the base right here and then cutting this vine into smaller cuttings. So this is the remaining of the mother plant. And then with this one, I'll be taking the cutting in between these two bare nodes, just like the previous one, like that. This part of the cutting is growing like in a spiral. So I'm gonna take a cutting in between that just to kind of break that up because it is kind of awkward. Just like that. And then we are left with this one, with the really long stem here that's bare. I think I'll just cut it from here just to get rid of this bare part. And then we'll see if this one actually will develop roots. So this one has a lot. I don't know if these will fit in my propagation box, but we will see. I might have to stick some of these into water. All right, so now with this string of hearts, I'm not really expecting much action from this, except for this one right here. These two, I don't know if they are still growing, but they look very sickly. I wasn't on top of the care for this one, unfortunately. But let's take it out of the glass here so we can inspect whatever roots it might have left. <laughs> All right, so this fickle looking vine has actually dropped all of its roots but we are left with this tuber right here so if you're not familiar with the root system on this plant they do develop these tubers beneath the soil where it holds all the water and then there will be roots coming out of that but also along the vine itself it will develop these as you can see right here and usually at those tubers along the vine, it will push out new growth. So for this one, I think I'm going to get rid of all of these leaves because they all feel really, really thin and they don't look that great. So I will try to save the tuber right here and right here. I might put the remaining of this into a plastic bag just to kind of see what happens. Now this next one is kind of the same story as the previous one. I'm gonna to try to save the tubers on these two. These have a little bit of roots coming out of them. So this one will get a head start and then this one will go into the plastic bag along with the other ones. Here is another tuber with roots. So this one is actually the healthiest looking one of the bunch and it has a tuber right up here. So I'm going to try to cut that 
take the cutting right above that one. So we are left with this. And the rest of this is garbage. Now with this one, there is a vine right here that stops around here. I'm gonna cut them all at the same length, actually. And then I'll take the remaining vines and propagate them into the propagation box into a little spiral. And hopefully with the humidity level in that box, it will try to push roots from all of the nodes and create a much fuller looking string of hearts. And once they all develop roots and new growth, I'm gonna probably put them all into this four inch pot and then we'll successfully have restarted this variegated string of hearts. So this is the remainder of this mother plant. And here are the five cuttings. The last plant here is the baby Syngonium albo, which is in the sphagnum moss in this little container. So I'm just gonna place this one as it is into the soil and hopefully it will continue pushing roots and new growth. All right, so now that we have all of our cuttings, let's prepare the propagation box. So here is the propagation box that I will be using. It's made of plastic. I got this from Target and I think it is the perfect size for a starter propagation box. So let me just put some soil in there and then we can put the cuttings in there as well. So the soil that I'm using today is from Dr. Q's and you can only find them from Star Nursery and it is the Dr. Q's Filthy Rich Gold Potting Soil and it's specifically made to be compatible with our southwestern climate that is a little bit more dry. So this soil mix tends to hold a little bit more moisture but at the same time it is faster draining all right so i think this is about an inch and a half of soil depth and i feel like that's going to be a good amount of soil because the roots will start to develop and grow downwards and have a little bit of soil depth to play with and not just hit the bottom of the, the container and just spread outwards so let's start with that and then we can finally place all of our cuttings into this container. I almost forgot. So before we get started, I'm gonna be dipping each cutting into this rooting powder. This is the first time I'm ever using rooting powder. So this is just extra insurance and hopefully all of the roots will develop with the help of this. So just for demonstration, this is how I'll be doing it. Just simply dipping the roots or where the roots will develop from. This In this case, the roots will be coming out through the stem. For the other cuttings, I will be putting this rooting powder directly onto the aerial roots. Okay, so according to my calculations, these Hundapsus pictus exotica cuttings are way too big for my little propagation box. So I've only had space to place two cuttings in here. The rest, I have four cuttings. I will be placing them in water. Now the last plant I'm gonna be putting in here is the string of hearts. Because this is a much more delicate plant, I wanna be more in control with how the roots develop. So I'm gonna be placing these into this tray, which will then go into this box. These are actually very long vines, so I'm gonna use a bigger tray. All right, so this is what the tray finally looks like. Now, most of these vines are just sitting on top of the soil. The individual tubers are buried in the soil, but because we are creating a very high humidity environment in the propagation box, they don't really need to be in the soil. So hopefully the roots, when they develop, they'll grow directly into the soil below and then they will take off and push out new growth from there. So now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be spraying and misting some water 
There is some um, Dr. Q's plant tonic in this bottle, so that will promote new growth. All right, and hopefully I'll be able to fit this guy in here. So if you're looking to make a propagation box of at least five plants, I would suggest a bigger container than this one. This one is about 12 inches by 12 inches by five inches. And although I think the depth of this is a good depth, it's probably the minimum depth you wanna go um, so that you'll be able to take bigger cuttings that are a little bit taller and not have to kind of squeeze anything in just like what I'm doing right now, so. All right, so everything's pretty snug in there. Now I'm just gonna be misting the rest of the plants in this box and then we'll be good to go. Okay, so I almost forgot about these Adansonii nodes, so I'm just gonna be randomly placing these into the box. All right, so that is all that I could fit in there. I will leave the remaining Adansonii node cuttings in the plastic bag, along with the string of hearts here, just as an experiment to see whether or not they survive. Probably unlikely, but I don't wanna just throw these away. So, in they go. There's my propagation box. Well, that is it for today's video, guys. I hope you guys learned a thing or two. Let me know down in the comments if you have any success stories or failure stories on propagating plants in a propagation box. This is my first time, so hopefully everything goes smoothly. So now all we can do is wait for all of these roots to develop and watch all of the new growth start to appear. It's gonna be pretty exciting. If you guys are interested in keeping up with some updates, definitely make sure you are plant scribed. And I will be doing some updates on my Instagram at such plants. So make sure you are following me on there as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you guys so much for all of the support. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.